Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. Sometimes in the UK the weather can be a little bit nondescript and I think that could well be applicable during the next week or two. Anyway, if that doesn't make you switch off, let's start. And as usual, I'm going to begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 5th. At the outset, we've got high pressure there centered to the northeast, low pressure to the west, and there is some showery rain in the southeastern corner. But quite a lot of dry weather through the next few days. I think that will be welcomed by many. However, as we head into the weekend, areas of low pressure to the south, the southwest, start to come into play, and bands of rain associated with the move northwards across the UK. I think it's worth saying as well that at times it could well be cold enough in the north for a little bit of sleet and snow over high ground. Running this through to its conclusion, the rain clears away, an easterly flow re-establishes itself with high pressure to the northeast and it's mainly dry at the end there. Now I've been talking about the winds coming in from the east, high pressure centred over Scandinavia, does that mean that it's going to be very cold? Well, no it doesn't because this animation shows upper air temperatures, so at about 1500 metres above sea level, and it's the dark blue shading, the purple shading, which indicates very cold air at this level. The UK here, under the sort of light blue, light green shading, so it's, it's a little bit chilly at times, particularly in the north as I run this, there's some blue there moving across some colder air, but all in all, nothing notable, nothing really significant there in terms of cold weather. Definitely not a beast from the east, as I've seen some people speculating about, at least not through the first week. Here are the temperatures down at the ground level, which we can expect just a, well, just a few charts to illustrate the potential. Wednesday afternoon, so forecast maximums, double figures just about there in southern and central regions, a little bit colder or cooler as you head into Scotland and Northern Ireland. Moving forwards to Saturday, not much changes. It is somewhat cold though in the northern half of the UK, as, as I showed on my animation with some colder air moving across there at times through the first week, but as I say, nothing really notable. Overnight lows with quite a lot of cloud around on many nights. I think frost is going to be restricted. There will be some around, but patchy. And this is shown forecast minimums on Saturday morning, several degrees above freezing point, but where, where the clear sky, where clear periods form, I think there will still be frost at times, but maybe not very widespread. Forwards to Monday afternoon, back to looking at maximums. At this point, maybe a couple of degrees lower than earlier in the week in the southern half of Britain. So ch chilly for this time of the year, a little bit below the norm, sevens, eights, nines there, but not really anything particularly cold. And that's reflected nicely by the Morgreps G ensemble plot. So this is the UK Met Office um, ensemble model with the different runs in it being reflected by the individual lines there and it's showing forecast temperatures for London. What we can see is reasonably good agreement really through the first week. The lines relatively close together. There is a little bit more separation further down the line but the general trend is for temperatures to be peaking in low double figures so 10, 11, 12 Celsius for much of the time. Rainfall. The charts here show the forecast aggregates from the ECM and GFS models for days 0 to 5. Just worth noting that the ECM chart on the left is now generated using higher resolution data, so it's using 0 0.25 degree data sets rather than 0 0.5 degree ones. Hence, there are a lot more points being plotted there and it looks quite crowded. I'll have that update. I'll have the scripts which generate these charts updated for next week, so the um, ECM plot should look a little bit cleaner once again. But the key takeout here is that rainfall amounts are not huge, but they are significant, particularly there close to the south coast on both of them, and also 
the totals seem to be a little bit higher in the east generally than in the west and that's indicative of the weather coming in from the east rather than from the Atlantic. Moving forwards to the 0-10 to day charts, the totals have increased a little bit. Once more, it's still not really supporting the idea of an Atlantic-based weather pattern because the rain totals there, particularly on the ECM chart, are higher in the east of Britain. So, how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 12th of March. Low pressure areas to the west there, the southwest. High pressure to the northeast. The UK somewhere in no man's land to an extent at this point. The Canadian model at the same time. Cold air there in the north, more of a, more of a clearly defined easterly flow, but once more there could be some sleet or snow over the northern hills if this is right, but in southern and central regions it wouldn't be cold enough. The European ECM model, quite a messy picture but fairly similar. And finally, the UK Met Office Global. This one actually is a little bit more promising if you're still hoping for some cold weather, particularly if you're living in the northern half of the UK. There is some very cold air really to our east, which is just in make starting possibly to make inroads towards the UK, at least the northern, uh, northern part of it. But taking those together, quite a nondescript first week would really summarize things. A good deal of dry weather for a time, then the areas of rain moving northwards through the weekend, and then towards the end of the week, which these charts are showing, high pressure to the northeast, low pressure to the west. Probably a reasonable amount of dry weather still at this point, with temperatures close to the average in the south, maybe a little bit below it in the north. So how do things shape up as we head through week two? Trends and probabilities, of course, of this range and nothing more. Here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures on the top half, very close to the average. Well, what the ensemble mean is the thick purple line stays close to a thick black line. That's the 30-year norm. There is quite a big spread though early on. It's just worth highlighting that there are some colder runs in there, but they are in a minority. So a few runs presumably are bringing in significantly colder air from the east, the northeast. But in general terms, going through week two, it really does look pretty average in terms of upper air temperatures at least. Rainfall across the bottom, well, some spikes continue to show up there. So there's, there's an ongoing risk of rain. A very low chance of snow, according to the snow row, it reaches a maximum there of 1 out of 33. So one of the runs out of the 33 which are available is forecasting snow to fall on, uh, on one day. That's the, the highest it goes. I wouldn't hold my breath. The 2 metre temperature data tables for London, something of an upwards trend there in terms of forecast maximums. Lots of yellow starting to appear, so runs going for maximums between 11 and 15. A little bit of the darker yellow, light orange, 16 to 20 later on there. Overnight lows, quite a lot of dark green early on, 1s to 5s, but I think with cloud around, as I've been saying, there wouldn't be much frost, not much ground frost even. And the overnight lows also trending upwards later on. Up to Manchester. I'll not dwell on this too much because it is a very similar story to the London chart. Two metre temperatures, a little bit lower, just following the trend of heading northwards and as usual it tends to be a little bit colder. Perhaps a greater risk of frost but nothing really of note there either and the upwards trend is showing its hand here. More yellow and a little bit of orange appearing later through the, towards the end of the second week. Up to Glasgow just to finish the journey. Close to average again along the top there. There are more spikes indicating a higher chance of rain or more frequent rainy spells. And also the snow row, it's actually quite high at times through the first week as I was 
suggesting there could be a little bit of snow falling, sleet or snow falling in the northern half of the UK at times, especially over high ground. But through the second week, the chance is reducing a maximum there early on of 6 out of 33. So I think the snow chance diminishing, as you would expect, towards the end of the, through the middle part of the month and beyond. But still not out of a question in the northern half of the UK, particularly over high ground. Two metre temperatures for uh, Glasgow, daytime values there, lots of light green, maximums are between 6 and 10. Also significantly more blue shading here, so a greater chance of air frosts, so temperatures dropping below 0 Celsius through the second week. That's really it, fairly, fairly run of the mill there I would say. Tr tr generally a little bit colder as you head northwards. The 10 day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot, Friday the 15th of March this is shown and it's of course it's generated by averaging out all of the individual runs. Low pressure to the west to the southwest, UK there, well fairly average I would suggest, maybe a chance of some rain at times, a changeable pattern but all in all nothing too notable. The ECM uh, plot at the same time is showing something of a more amplified pattern here, low pressure here, higher pressure over the UK, quite probably a reasonable amount of dry weather at this stage if it's correct but as I say nothing too notable. The um, York mean surface level pressure data table generated using the GEFS data Lots of yellow in the columns there, 1011 to 1025 millibars. There is a significant amount of green, so if anything, the trend towards the end of the second week, at least through the second half of it, is for lower pressure to be returning. So a changeable pattern probably becoming established as we go through the second week. But all in all, it does look fairly, fairly typical, really. The number of rain spikes indicating an ongoing chance of rain on those GEFS plots and this suggesting that if anything pressure will be trending downwards. So to summarise, week one often dry early on but through the weekend outbreaks of rain push northwards. Temperatures are fluctuating around the average and at times it is likely to be cold enough for snow over the Scottish hills. Week two, probably quite dry early on, but generally changeable. Pressure starting to fall and a greater chance of rain in all regions. Temperatures fluctuating around the norm. If anything, there could be a signal for it to become milder as we head towards the end of the second week. So, uh, there we have it. I started off by saying that at times the weather in the UK can be a little bit nondescript and the next week or two may well illustrate that. Hopefully you can now see why. But with that said, there is always the potential for surprises. There were still a few runs in the GEFS ensemble going for much colder conditions a relatively small minority, but not totally out of the question. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as ever and found it useful. If you did, then I'd be very grateful if you could hit the like button below. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Finally, remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the Weather Outlook dot com website. Thanks very much now. Bye. <laughs>